Little Samuel and the other young chefs are the honored guests at the fourth annual Kids State Dinner and their host, none other than the First Lady, Michelle Obama. Fuel efficient cars and hybrid vehicles have reduced the amount of tax revenue going into the Highway Trust Fund, while the need for more road repairs and maintenance continues to grow. Hi, you know what? Actually, the weather has gotten a lot warmer. It has cooled down just a little bit. And when you're in the shade like I am, the sun isn't here to keep you warm, but trust me, over the weekend, it will get warmer. I visited Baldwinsville this morning and spoke to a few people who were at the bridge over the Seneca River where the two men drowned and whose bodies are still missing. Our D.C. reporter Catherine Witherspoon met up with the little Samuel and his family as they received the presidential treatment in the nation's capital. This is a dream. For most, an invitation to the White House is just that, a dream. But for 11-year-old Samuel Davis, one of the lucky winners of the Healthy Lunchtime Challenge, it's a reality. Once we were in Washington um, a few years ago, I was like, we should go into the White House and meet um, First Lady Michelle Obama, and now I will get to do that. But before the big event, representing each of the states, four territories, and the District of Columbia, all 55 chefs and their families received a private tour of the Smithsonian and the Julia Chow's Kitchen. Uh, we're glad that we're representing the state of Louisiana. Um, we're just excited and elated about the opportunity. Little Samuel and the other young chefs are the honored guests at the fourth annual Kids State Dinner and their host, none other than the First Lady, Michelle Obama. Welcome to the White House. Sam and his mom couldn't believe that of all the thousands of recipes submitted for the challenge, the first lady recognized Sam's. Sam's Southern Savoring Salmon Supreme or S to the fifth power. <laughs> Sam, was that you? And of course, no state dinner would be complete without a visit from the first lady's husband. He's the president of the United States. Hey. Good to see you. Hello, everybody. How are you? So, all right, everybody can have a seat. I'm sorry to crash your little party here, but I just wanted to say hi to everybody. Reporting from Washington, Catherine Witherspoon, KTVE, NBC 10. Every two years, kids from across the country gather in Washington, D.C. Their mission to help find a cure for type 1 diabetes. And when they told me I had diabetes, I had no idea. Like, I didn't even know what it was. It's a place where kids like 12-year-old Max from New Orleans get to meet other kids just like him. JDRF has really been such a good place, like, because you can find so many tips and they give you so much products to make sure that you can really have the easiest lifestyle you can with the disease. Because life with type 1 diabetes can be challenging, especially for an 11-year-old. Yeah, I have to check my blood sugar 12 to 15 times a day. Lydia was diagnosed two years ago. Um, this pump, it gives me insulin because my pancreas can't produce um, my own insulin, so I have to use this. For Lydia and Max and all the other JDRF Children's Congress members, this trip to Washington would not be complete without a visit to Capitol Hill. They brought their message to Senators David Bitter and Bill Cassidy. I want them to know that diabetes can hurt someone's life and that we want to find a cure. A cure that could help millions of children and adults go from type 1 to type 9. From Washington, Katherine Witherspoon, KTVE NBC 10. This commercial isn't just promoting how much time you save getting car insurance with e-insurance. It's actually a comical way to show how seniors think social media works. I unfriend you. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. On the contrary, a Pew Research Center study shows something different. The number of older Americans, 65 and older, using sites like Facebook has increased by 25%. And the number of older Americans using Twitter have doubled since 2013. And that trend of silver surfers using social media is evident even here in central New York. <laughs> Thank you for calling members at Greenpoint. This is Ashley speaking. How may I direct your call? It's Tuesday, which means it's time for the iPad for Seniors class. 
juice. We're running out of juice is not the juice you drink. It's the kind that fuels the iPad and connects seniors to the world through social media. No, I always get that. The wrong one. Mary Berry has been using her iPad for almost two years, and you'd be amazed at her age. She's 94 years old, and she uses Facebook. Email. I love email so and Facebook because I get to see all my yeah, grandbabies' pictures. Now, see, I don't really know enough to get on my own page. But you have one. Yes, yes. <laughs> Every month, 1.19 billion people are using Facebook, and 232 million people are tweeting on Twitter. Overall, 70% of Americans are using social media, and they're doing so for social interaction. And that's the very reason so many seniors are logging on. Hello. Hello! How are you? Good. Good! This is Ruth Moss. She is 84 years old and one of many seniors who use social media for social interaction. And you have a Facebook page? Yeah, of course. How long have you been on Facebook? Ever since I had this. And because of her iPad, she can now stay in touch with her children, especially her grandchildren, through pictures on Facebook. My daughter yeah. from here. My daughter from Pennsylvania. I mean, this is my husband's grave. Social media is special to seniors, which makes the reason for the increase in seniors on sites like Facebook heartwarming. There's somebody in here that her whole family's in California. There's no communication, really. Where if she was on this, she could, could communicate as well as see pictures of how her grandkids are growing and that sort of thing. And for seniors, that communication is their connection and their comfort. Catherine Witherspoon, NCC News.